Here's a story from a distant star about a planet called Zaponia, where the people cried and shook with fear, because the land was gone, the end was near. On an urgent mission to put it right, brave young Zippy, day and night, searched through space till in view came a spinning world of green and blue. Welcome to Ziku's Earth Adventure! And this is where it all begins in a world of science and earthling friends. Yes, stargazers, it's that time of the year again. Time for the Zarponian annual Zeebel Deebel Day. The build-up to this year's festival has been one of the most exciting ever. The winner of the Miss Zeebel Deebel is none other than the lovely Luleyu Lovafubal. As the Marponian Times reported, Luleyu has the shiniest purple smile this side of the Milky Way, not to mention those three shapely legs. Luleyu will be one of the main attractions at our annual Zeebel Deebel Day Parade, so be sure not to miss it. Uh, uh, we interrupt this report for a special transmission from Zarponia. Prime Councillor Zed Zandor calling Pod Controller Ziku. Calling Ziku. Come in, Ziku. Pod Councillor Ziku here. Come in, Zandor. Zipping, zoing, zoopal, zap, zap, Ziku. Zipping, zoing, zoo, zola, zola, Zandor. Happy Zeebel Deebel Day, Ziku. Happy Zeebel Deebel Day, Zandor. I trust that you've been keeping up the traditions of Zeebel Deebel Day even though you are not here today. Well, it's a very special day here on Earth as well. Look! Great galaxies! Now what on Earth is that? Well, this is my special outfit for the special day here on Earth. That is quite an outfit. It's almost as impressive as the Zeebel Deebel Day suit. But Ziggo, what on earth is it all about? Well, today is Arbor Day, a special day for trees. Mighty meteorites. What a great idea. You know, trees have been seen as very special creatures by many planets all over the multiverse. Earthlings are very clever sometimes. Well, as you know, we eat flurly pips and zinger toots and dance the zoki pokey all day and night on Zeebel Deebel Day to remember how special and happy Zarponia once was. What do they do on Earth on their, um, tree day? Well, Bali told me that on Arbor Day, everyone on Earth should plant an indigenous tree. Ah, that's a very good idea. Your information on indigenous gardens was very valuable, and as a result, I have organized to have a Zagapanthus planted just outside the Chief Counselor's Directorate in celebration of Zeebel Deebel Day. Also, Ziggo, I'm thinking of planting a line of zokes along the Z3 Highway. But there's just one problem. We've never had gardens in Zaponia before, so we don't know how to plant a tree. So your mission for today is to find out how does one plant a tree? And should one also plant an indigenous tree? Do indigenous trees have special benefits? Leaping lizards! That's exactly what Mbali said we're going to do today. As part of their school's indigenous garden, and seeing as it's Arbor Day, we're all going to be planting trees. Excellent! I hope you have a very zoobal dee doo Arbor Day. I hope you have a zoobal dee doo zoobal dee -bal day, Sandal. Over and out. <coughs> Over and out. <coughs> We have a lot of work to do today. I think we should start with Zoom looking for examples of indigenous trees. Zoom! I don't think that Zandal meant that trees are creatures like animals. I don't think that plants would attack you on Earth. That could only happen on Pluna 7. Now off you go, Zoom. Hot controller Zigu has a lot of information to gather today. Thank you, Zillion. Zandor said that trees are very special. But before I find out how to plant them, can you please tell me why they're so special? Oh yes, Zeebo. I have been scanning some information while you and Zandor were talking and I found some very interesting facts about trees. Trees are an important part of the natural environment. Like all other plants, they produce oxygen, which animals and people need to live. And trees produce a lot of oxygen. 
the bigger the plant, the more oxygen. Scientists call big groups of trees like these forests the lungs of the world. I was wondering where all this free air comes from. On Zarponia, we have to pay to breathe. They are also like sponges because they help to hold moisture in their shady branches and keep the ground underneath damp. Trees also provide leaves and fruit for insects, birds, bats, and other animals to eat. Many living things make their homes in the branches and trunks of trees. The leaves and sometimes fruit of trees form a layer of compost under trees. This provides another place for animals to live and also enriches the soil, making it possible for other plants to grow there. That's what Garth the gardener said. We had to add compost to the soil when Mbali and I were planting all the indigenous plants at the school. They also provide shelter for smaller bushes and shade plants to live. So Ziku, as you can see, trees are very important here on Earth because not only do they give Earthlings oxygen to breathe, but they also help support other forms of life. Leaping lizards! Now I see why planting trees is so important. Xander is going to be very pleased. See you soon, Zillion! <laughs> Oh, Ziku, it's just you. I thought I'd be used to you by now, popping out of nowhere. Where's the Arbor Day Parade? <laughs> well, Arbor Day is not a party celebration. Marching Martians, why not? Do you know how important trees are? They're the lungs of the earth and homes to many little creatures. Well, I never thought of it that way. I mean, all we do on Arbor Day is plant a tree. And I think planting a tree is much more important than having a party. You're right, Mbali. Planting a tree on Earth is better than having a party. Sometimes Earthlings are very clever. So, let's plant a tree. Great galaxies, can I help? My mission is to find out how to plant a tree. And also, so that Zarponia can have lungs. Of course you can. First, we dig a hole. Why does it always have to start with digging? Why can't we start with eating an ice cream? <laughs> I'd love to see that tree. Grab a shovel. We're going to plant a tree right here. Garth the gardener is going to bring some more trees. Why are you planting a tree at the school next to your house? Well, the schoolyard doesn't have enough trees, so I decided to plant a tree in the schoolyard. How did you decide which tree to plant? Well, you know, like the other plants in the garden, we have to think carefully about the climate, remember? Oh, yes, I remember. It depends on how much rain we get and how hot or cold it gets. Yep, certainly. That's why we have chosen this tree, which is the river bush willow, and we're going to plant it right here because this is its perfect habitat. Now enough with the questions and let's get digging. There you too. I see you've done some hard work already, eh? Sorry, Garth. Hi, Garth. Now that we've dug up the hole, what's next? As well, your hole is uh, nice and wide. You see, the tree's roots need to grow sideways and downwards, so they need plenty of room to grow in. But what we must first check is whether the soil isn't too hard. If it's too hard, we must break it up and loosen it up so that those roots can spread even further. Then, what we do is take the plastic off the plant, because that's very important. We don't want to cut all the roots off, just the plastic. Okay. Okay. And then we put the tree into our hole and make sure that it sits at the correct height. It looks like the tree's disappeared. What am I going to do? <laughs> we can fix that easily, Zico. All we need to do is to put some more soil back into our hole. And then we can make sure that the tree is sitting at the right height. There we go. You want to put in a shovel full? Okay. There we go. Shall we try and see? And... I thought I was in trouble there. <laughs> no problem, Zico. Now what we do is put some of the rest of the soil back in 
and make sure that our tree is standing up straight. Okay, there we go. But then, God, why don't you add compost to the tree like you did to all the other plants in the garden? No, no, no. Compost is not recommended. You see, the soil in the hole, if that is full of nice compost and it's full of food for the tree, mm -hmm. then the roots won't grow out and spread out and the tree won't grow big and strong. Oh, I see. But that looks a bit skew. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. We'll have to stake it. No! Don't hurt my tree! <laughs> Zico, I won't hurt a tree. A stake? Well, a stake, all that is, is a nice long stick like that, which we put in to the ground in order to hold a tree upright. That means to keep it straight while it's growing. But remember to keep the stake well away from the existing roots. And you'll see there are the existing roots and there's our new soil. We'll just tap it in and make sure that it's nice and firm. And then a piece of string. We'll make sure that we tie the tree, not too tightly. We tie it loosely to the stake so that it doesn't interfere with the way that the tree grows. You don't want to stop it growing or slow it down. There we go. Right, make sure that our tree is nice and straight. And when the tree is able to stand up on its own, then we can remove the stakes. It's okay. I guess that's not so bad. <laughs> now, for some mulch. There we go. Have a look at this. This is mulch. See? All that is is wood chips and bits of bark and so on. And we sprinkle that around the tree, like so, not too close to the trunk, mm -hmm. and about 10 centimeters deep. Okay. Now what the mulch does is to keep the soil from going dry, and also it feeds the roots of the tree. Mm. I think it's going to be nice to come sit under the shade next week when the tree's big. I think it's going to take a little longer than that, Ziku. <laughs> You're quite right, Mbali. You see, a properly planted tree grows about a half a meter to a meter in a year. <gasps> so you'll have to come back next year to see just how quickly the tree has grown. But what's also important... Oh, we have to water the tree <laughs> to keep it moist. But don't soak it, like so. I think I'm going to call this plant Zillion. Is this also an indigenous tree? Oh yes, very much so. Yes, it is. I'm glad. I can't wait to go and plant a tree outside my pod. I mean, house. Oh, that's a very good idea, Ziku. <laughs> now, we're done here. I have to go and plant some more trees. I'll see you guys later. Okay, see bye. You. Cheerio. That was close. Do you think he heard you say space pod? Great galaxies! I thought I was going to be in trouble there for a moment. Luckily, God loves his plants so much. I doubt he even heard you. <laughs> I must go now. I still have lots of work to do before I report back to Zandal. Mm -hmm. And I still want to plant the tree outside my space pod. Perhaps I'll call it Bali. Cool! <laughs> okay, bye! Bye! <sighs> Saudi Zillion, Saudi Zoom. Zoopity zoop zoop. Saudi Pod Controller Zico, I hope you had a fruitful day. <laughs> a fruitful day. Get it? Fruit, trees, fruit, trees. Never mind. How was your day, Zico? Great, Zillion. I've learned a lot about how to plant trees. Did you and Zoom get some info on indigenous trees? And along with all the images Zoom got, I have some very interesting information. In the last hundred years, about half of the natural forests growing here in South Africa have been destroyed. People use them to make fires, build houses, and construct furniture. In their place, people have planted trees from other countries. Leaping Leozoids! South Africa has over 1,000 indigenous trees, but in England there's only 35. It's very strange how South African earthlings plant trees from other places when they have so many of their own. Indeed. Look at all the different kinds of trees. Different sizes, shapes and types. All trees have a trunk. But look, 
This varies in thickness and texture. And look how branches and leaves grow from the trunk. This is the Otaniqua yellow wood. It's the tallest tree in South Africa. It grows in the forests near the coast, near George and Meisner in the Western Cape. That's not a tree. Zoom. 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 Zoom is right, Siku. I know it doesn't look like a tree, but it is. It's called a Welwitchia. It's the shortest tree in Southern Africa. Its trunk is only three meters long. You can't see it because it is underground to protect it from the heat of the desert sun. Trees can live for a long time, Zoom. This one can live for 2,000 years. Well, that won't do. I need a tree to plant next to the pod. Ah, oh, let's see. Trees can live for a very long time. The cycad is one of the most ancient kinds of trees in Southern Africa and also in the world. They were growing like they do today at the time of the dinosaurs. They have cones that look a little bit like pineapples. This provided food for dinosaurs and also for other animals and people. Long ago, people called this plant the Bruekboom because the pith from the inside of the trunks was used to make bread. Today, these plants are rare and protected. People are not allowed to use them for food. I like this tree, Pod Controller Ziku. I think you should plant one like that here. That tree is not going to like this climate. It needs something that will grow in this climate. It's hot and dry. But I don't think I want a whatchamacallit. There are not many trees that grow in hot, dry places like the Welwitchia. Perhaps the quiver tree. But notice it does not grow as tall as the trees you would find in a forest. It also has fewer leaves. What about the baobab? It is sometimes called the upside down tree. It has an extremely fat, wide trunk. People have used the inside space of some baobabs as a house and even a prison. Many birds and animals like to use this tree for shelter, such as weavers and hornbills. Bats come out at night to drink this tree's nectar when it is flowering. There are some moths, spiders and geckos that can only live on and inside a baobab tree. Dandor calling Ziku. Come in, Ziku. I will look at more examples later, but first I need to report back to Zandal. Saudi Zandal! Saudi Zeko! What are you doing? I'm looking at indigenous trees, sir. I want to plant one next to the pod. Ah, I gather the mission was successful, yeah? Yes, sir. Stand by for reports. Zapit Zilian! Trees are an important part of the natural environment. They produce oxygen, which animals and people need to live. Many living things also depend on trees for food, shelter and protection. The leaves and fruit that fall from the trees become food for plants in the soil and make it possible for smaller bushes and shade plants to live underneath. Oh, I knew trees were special. And what did you learn about indigenous trees? By planting indigenous trees, earthlings are helping to make up for the destruction that has been done in the past. Indigenous trees also grow well naturally in their own habitat. There's lots of amazing trees that grow in Southern Africa. If earthlings plant indigenous trees, they will have shade in hot weather and will also beautify the environment. Well, this has been a very successful mission. Now what about how to plant a tree? Steps to follow when planting an indigenous tree. Find an appropriate site, choose a tree that suits this place. Loosen soil around the tree, to the side and below, dig a hole. Place the tree at the correct level. Replace the soil with no compost and mulch around the tree. Keep moist. Hmm, on second thoughts, I think we should maybe go for Zarkasias instead of Zorks. This indigenous idea makes a lot of sense. Well, this has been a very successful mission, Ziku. Congratulations. It has been most useful. Thank you, Counselor. Over and out. Prepare to send information. Data drives engaged. Uploading files. Matrix ZZZZZZ. Completing transmission. Upload successful. Over and out. Zawi! Mission accomplished. Zia Zoon, Zillian. Ziga Zoon, Zoon. Good night, good earth. Good luck, brave Zarponia.